Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and remember. Context is Everything Media Network. Founder and CEO John Michael is reading another textbook cover to cover. This is an American history textbook from a Catholic school curriculum from the year 1940. Here we are in Chapter 3, Section 7. The Middle Colonies. The Middle Colonies. Traders from Holland. The people of Holland in Europe were great traders. There was a time when people of Holland were called Dutch. That time is today. This nickname became displeasing to them, did it? The government of Holland a few years ago passed a law that the term Dutch was no longer applied to their people. Holland is sometimes called the Netherlands. Wait a minute. You're telling me a few years before 1940, when this book was written, the government of Holland passed a law that made the term Dutch no longer applicable to their people. That's what it says right here in this textbook. That is so interesting. I'll tell you right now, that is legitimately interesting because that law went right out the window because they're called Dutch regularly. Okay, traders from Holland um, were eager to enjoy the rich trade of the East. Groups of merchants in Holland formed the trading formed trading companies. These trading companies became very wealthy and very powerful. One of the trading companies hired Henry Hudson. He was able to he was an able English seaman. Uh, the trading company gave Henry Hudson common command of the small ship. This ship was called the Half Moon. It had a crew of twenty men. The trading company sent Henry Hudson on an explore exploring trip to find a route across North America to the east, the voyage. Commanded by Henry Hudson, the Half Moon set sail to find a short route east. Henry Hudson believed that three there might be Northwest Passage across North America. The idea of a Northwest Passage was not new. Many p people believed that there was some waterway from the Atlantic to the Pacific Ocean. Weeks later, oh no, the Half Moon sailed from Holland. Hudson steered the boat across the Atlantic Ocean. Weeks later, they reached the coast of North America. Exploring. The crew led by Henry Hudson explored along the Atlantic coast. They searched from the Chesapeake Bay to the Long Island for a new, an opening into the land. Their hopes were high when they noticed a large river uh, entered the sea just west of Long Island. Henry Hudson thought this stream might be an entrance to the Northwest Passage for which he was looking, the Hudson River. Ever heard of it? The Half Moon was steered into a beautiful river. They sailed northward on, um, uh, on up the river. Soon they saw a natural wall of rock. This cliff-like rocks rose straight up from the river. They were looking at the Palisades, a line of lofty, steep cliffs like those pictured is called, are called the Palisades. These are the lofty, steep cliffs here. These are natives. This is the Half Moon. Before long, the Half Moon was sailing near the high hills along the river bank. Henry Hudson named the stream the River of Mountains. Today, it is called the Hudson River in honor of the man who discovered it. The scenery along the river was be very beautiful. It was late autumn of 1609. The autumn colors added great beauty. Henry Hudson steered the ship farther northward. The stream was becoming narrow and shallow. This showed Henry Hudson that the river was not passage across the continent. 
Hudson River is quite beautiful. Take a day cruise. It is pretty nice. Henry Hudson and the Indians. Near the mouth of the river, the crew had seen Indians. The Indians had never seen a sailing vessel. The Indians were curious. They wondered what kind of thing this could be that was sailing on the river. They may have thought that the half moon was some great water fowl. And the Indians were determined to learn about this strange thing. So they paddled their canoes right up to the half moon. The Indians climbed aboard the half moon. Henry Hudson gave the Indians gifts and showed them around the deck of the vessel. The Indians left the boat satisfied. Usually when Hudson landed along the bank, he met friendly Indians. They gave the white men gifts of corn, fruits, nuts, and tobacco. The white men gave the Indians gifts of trinkets. There was some real trading between the Indians and the crew. The Indians traded some beaver furs for hatchets and knives. Henry Hudson realized that the River Mountains was not the Northwest Passage across America. It was getting late in the year for any more exploring, so Henry Hudson steered the half moon on its return to Europe. Holland's interest in America. The first voyage of Henry Hudson to America caused great interest in Holland. All the land in it that Henry Hudson explored while sailing along under the flag of Holland was claimed by Holland. The merchants of Holland were greatly interested in the fact that Indians had furs of, to trade. Traders from Holland came to the island at the mouth. Holland, yeah, yeah. Traders from Holland came from the island at the mouth of the Hudson River. Traders wished to begin selling fur trading at once. Manhattan Island. The Indians called the island Manhattan. The Dutch West India Company had been formed to carry on trade with this island. Settlers came from Holland to found a colony on this island. New Netherlands. The settlers began to call the region in the New World claimed by Holland, the New Netherlands. Peter Minuit, the governor of the New Never Netherlands in 1626. That same year, he decided to buy the island of Manhattan from the Indians. He gave the Indians colored glass beads, brass buttons, gay ribbons, and little trinkets in exchange for the island. These articles were li of little value. That is why it is sometimes said that the island of Manhattan was bought for $24. Manhattan is now part of the great city of New York. A trading post was located on the lower end of Manhattan, a place where supplies were stored and where goods were, like furs, were, could be traded, uh, was called a trading post. The trading post on Manhattan Island was called New Amsterdam. This settlement, which began as a trading post, grew to be the largest city in the New World. Another trading post was started up in the Hudson River. It was called Fort Orange. This present city of Albany is the site of Fort Orange. The Patroon System. Holland was determined to have settlers in America. The scheme they made for settling the New Netherlands was not a very wise plan. Large tracts of land in New Netherlands were offered to members of Dutch West India Company. There were only a few rules. 1. Merchants must take at least 50 settlers to the new land. 2. He must pay all expenses. A merchant willing to undertake such a settlement was called a patron or a patroon. The patroon system did have some advantages, though. One, it helped bring settlers to America. Two, it held the land claimed by Holland. Three, it opened up rich farmlands 
and the patroon was a very powerful. He had powers to judge and rule over the farmers on his estate. Some patroons became very stern and very unfair to the farmers. The patroon system had some great disadvantages. One, people under the patroon had practically no political rights. Two, very large estates fell into the hands of few wealthy patroons. And three, the patroons became interested in gaining great personal wealth. That's it. Have a good day. God bless. Today is November 15th, 2023, and the patroons are at it again. Goodbye.